Shalom. Uh, before we begin this lesson, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rachakwadash. Also, as well, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. They continue to rule very well to this very day. That's continually feeding the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And also, as well, Shalom. Much to honors to the whole elect that's continually laboring his work and also labor to show for your diligence to make your calling in relation sure in all faith, truth, sincerity, and also in all charity. All right. And the uh, the topic of this lesson is going to be entitled The Most Preferred Kingdom, in which the most preferred kingdom is, of course, as we know, is the kingdom of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai. Now, why is that? What is the reason behind this kingdom being most preferred? Well, it's because the this rulership, which we're speaking of, which is of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai, is a rulership of righteousness to where everything on the planet Earth, to the plants, the animals, okay, the ecosystem, you know, to the even to the air that we breathe, you know, it's all going to be cleansed and set right. Because now as it stands, this current system that's set up, this current kingdom, which is established here on the planet Earth, which is uh, the kingdom of Esau Edom, which Esau is the true biblical nationality, the so-called white man. Uh, his kingdom has been set here on the planet of today. And, and and what is the result of this current kingdom that you see? Uh, the ecosystem, life itself is dying. Life in, in general is, uh, is, is, is dying out because this man is in rulership. And that's why today, you know, our people, which starts with uh, the elect of the nation of Israel, which the Israelites are, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans. The, the ones that are uh, are looking towards this, this uh, preferred kingdom are the elect. And the elect is calling out right now as we speak to Yahweh Bashmiel Shai to deliver us out of this current captivity, out of this pit that we have been put in due to our people's transgressions all right us as a people went off and this is the result of our people uh going off so without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and hop into the precepts here uh give me just a second here let me check and make sure that i got it Slack you, yeah. Just making sure had a little uh, technical difficulty, but uh, we're back. So, yeah. So again, going into uh, the spirit, or back into the spirit, when we're speaking about uh, the most preferred kingdom, in which again, like I said, the elect of the nation of Israel are the ones that are crying out for this this kingdom to be established, and for this current kingdom that's set up now to be destroyed, because living in this current kingdom in this system is irksome to our spirits you know it's irksome and and, and you know seeing the atrocities that are taking place here on the planet earth especially directed towards our people because of course this man is still hunting the nation of israel to this very day you know he he's playing out his role very well and being that cunning hunter that is out for the lives of, of, of the nation of israel and, and make no mistake, it starts with the elect. Because this man knows that the elect of the nation of Israel is speaking of, or spoken of, should I say. And they are uh, making plans to this very day to do away with the elect of the nation of Israel. See, because this man, you know, he has uh, done a deep search. And, um, and he searched out our people. And you can see that. So and guess what? He used that to his very advantage. 
that's why you have things that are, are perpetuated here in America, which again is Babylon the Great. That's why you see things perpetuated here in, in Babylon that catches the eye of our people. And and really all these things that are set up are, is to is to uh and further entrap our people into this deep darkness that they have have ended up in. Because uh, again, you know, this place America, which is Babylon the Great, you know, is nothing but death that proceeds out of this place and and, and deep darkness. And, and guess what? Our, our people don't they don't recognize that. They don't recognize that this place is 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 not for our turn. And here it is, time and time again. The, the, the so-called white man, which again is Esau Edom, has shown his horns towards our people and shown how he really feel. But you know, our people are not taking heed to the the, the signals, the signs. Okay, this whole this man's whole track record is a sign in itself. And one, you would think that uh, out of a multitude, you would think there would be a few or at least half that may consider and say, well, damn, this, this man has done us, you know, dirty for years and years on end. You know, this, what, what's the reasoning behind this? What, what is the reason why this man go to these links, uh, links to, uh, to uh, destroy us, but that's not happening. You only got one out of, well, just like, um, uh, King Solomon. All right, when you read in the book of uh, Proverbs, if I'm not mistaken, it says out of out of a uh, hundred men, if I'm not mistaken, he only found one that was righteous. And and guess what? That stands today. Out of out of a hundred men, out of a a, a a multitude of Israelites, you you will only find one man one man out of that multitude that's uh, righteous. And that's what you're seeing today. You have that small uh, number, that remnant that has returned. And that has been uh, uh, plucked out of the multitude of the Israelites, which are uh, which are the two thirds. So, it's like you, yeah. So again, you know, the Lord has taken that that one remnant, that that one number, that is one small, uh, a minuscule number, and plucked it out of a trillion. And that's what you're seeing today. With the men of the Lord have been set up on the planet Earth. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the scriptures. You know, it's like I know if I went off on a tangent, but you know, that's the spirit. So, so forgive me. Uh, it's the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, and this is 14. And of course, you know, uh, before I even continue, you know, Lord's will, this is uh, edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, Lord's will, this uh, feeds you to the full uh, with his word, and that you, uh, you get fit and um, be edified. So let's go ahead and get right into the scriptures. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 14. It says, The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. Okay, see that? So the, the, the main point in this is that the captive, captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he doesn't die in the pit. All right, so there it is. And um, from there, it says, uh, nor that his bread should fail. And what's that bread represents? That bread represents the knowledge. Okay. And, and it doesn't stop there. You know, it, it stop. It also as well, what goes into that as well is that uh, the Lord is going to give us our daily bread. Okay. But first it starts with the word. Everything else, it comes afterwards. That's why the scriptures say, um, um, you're perfectly paraphrasing. It says that think not on tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself so to speak okay and that the lord is gonna um give to us our our, our what, what's sufficient for for our daily needs so read on it says but, uh, but i am the lord yahweh bashmi al shai thy power that divided the sea oh and also as well that word says nor thy bread should fail all right that's also uh speaking into even future future events Okay, because guess what? We're gonna uh, have uh, bread, which bread represents substance. We're gonna have that to the full. Everything is gonna be turned back to its fullness, and everything is gonna be given into the hands of first and foremost Yahweh Shai, all right, and then the elect of the nation of Israel. Starting with the elect of the nation of Israel, you know our people, the Israelites, are gonna rule on the planet Earth once again. That power is gonna be given back to us by Yahweh Shai. 
So uh, verse 15 says, I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, that power that divided the sea, whose waves warred. The Lord of hosts is his name. All right. And that's the title. Okay. Hosts represents armies. So it says the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. That's why when you read in Exodus, he say, it says that he is a man of war. All right. Uh, Yahweh Bashem El Shai is his name. Likewise here, the Lord of hosts is his name. So the Lord of, of armies, okay, that's his title. That's what he is known as, okay? And he's been given many titles, uh, especially among this that you see here. But uh, let's see. I believe that's it on that. Let me go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, it's the book of our first John, chapter 2, verse 17. It says, uh, and the world passes away. Actually, slide again. Let me start at verse 16. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. See, so all that is in the world, we're just talking about this current world that we're living in. And what, what does it contain? The lust of the flesh, right? The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It is by those certain lusts that our people are drawn away. And like it says here, it's the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, something that's uh, alluring to the sight. That, that 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 makes you want to uh step out there so to speak <laughs> you know what i'm talking about but um uh, it says in the pride of life and that's what comes all that that would it all comes with it comes with having the pride of life the the pride of 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 living an american lifestyle that's what that pride really is because to, to be a true american is to be be proud isn't that and that's the motto for for babylon okay the 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 brave, the proud. So it says, in the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. See, everything that, that's listed here, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is of the world, and is not of Yahweh Bashmel Shai. So uh, verse 17, it says, in the world passes away, and the lust thereof. Okay, so that lets you know that it's not going to be here forever. America is just, is just a... a, a um, I don't want to get, uh, I, I want to keep this PG, all right? So, uh, but it, what it speaks about here is uh, it, it, it's basically what it speaks about the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That's that, that's something that's that's uh, that's empty. That's why this this place is, is considered to be darkness. You know, it plays on the flesh. It plays on the eyes. So it says it's the it's the it's the pride of life. So, but it says here it says it's not of the father, but is of the world. See that? Now, um, like it says in verse seventeen, it says the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of Yahweh Bashmel Shai abide it forever. So, pretty soon it's not like I said it's not going to last forever. Okay. Oh yeah, and I, I, just to get back to the point, you know, because I. Uh, I've uh, lost the point there, but I'll slack you. Um, when it says the world passes away in the Leicester, uh, that means it's, it's just it's just a, a, a night party. That's all it is. And it can only go so far. You know, it gets to 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock until eventually the sun comes up. And that's what's happening. The, the sun is, is arising once again. And the night is running away. You know, the, that darkness and and the creatures that lurk among those 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 uh, uh that lurks among the darkness are fleeing away and um and that re that's a representation of Yahweh Shah returning to the planet earth to restore righteousness you know the night like the scriptures say actually you know let me get it it says uh the night is far spent it's like all right, so it says here, uh, Romans chapter 13, uh, verse 12. It says, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Okay, so the night is far spent. It's, it, it's, we, we reached the midnight hour because we're, we're at the height of this man's system. We're at the height of this man's kingdom. So the night is far spent. Now it, there's a transition happening. 
Now that's it went now it went midnight, which is 12 a.m. And it's one o'clock, two o'clock. Oh, there's some there's light in the distance. Three o'clock, four o'clock, it's getting brighter and brighter. Five o'clock, six o'clock, eventually the sun comes up. So that's what you're seeing. So now that the night is expiring, that's why that's why scriptures uh, speak of is saying, look, it may feel like it's tearing, all right, but it will come. Because the Lord is speeding things up. Because when you witness as well, when the uh, the night transitions to the day, it's a fast process. You know, and, and, uh, and here it is. That's happening right now. Because see, now things are speeding up. And now the, 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 the day is returning. So it says, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Right. It's a, it's a time to... Um, it's like you. Yeah, it's a it's a time to where you know you certain things are done in the night, but then there's a time to where certain things are, are done in the day. So now the ones that 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 are a part of that darkness, okay. Or when the scripture actually when the scriptures say, "Let us therefore cast out the works of darkness," that's the elect of the nation of Israel returning and leaving off those works of darkness. You know, leaving off those those things that were done in the dark, and, and now approaching towards the daylight. And it says, let us put on the armor of light. There you go. So th those dark clothes, that, that dark, uh, nasty clothing that you have, you took that off, and now you have an arm of light to where you can now withstand uh, against the, that, that day. Okay. So that's it on that. Um, where was I? Okay. Yep. So uh, on to Isaiah chapter 30. Verse two. Actually, you know what's like. I'm gonna start at uh, as I'm gonna start at, uh, in the book of Proverbs. So it's Proverbs uh, chapter seven, verse seven. It says, "It be, be and beheld among the simple ones, I discern among the youths, a young man void of understanding." Okay. So, and then guess what? You you have those that are here today that are void of understanding, and this is uh, what have, what has happened to the ones that are void of that same understanding. Because see, now today you have the, the truth that has been brought out. You have the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim al Shai being brought to light. But you still have those that are void of understanding. Because if they did have understanding, then they will recognize that this is, this is it. This is the answer. That this message that we're bringing. Um, so I'm gonna skip around a little bit. It says, uh, uh, verse 10, it says, and beheld there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Yeah, you see that? Uh, it says she is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. So this woman that has an attire of a harlot, that's talking about Babylon. Okay, and also it says a uh, uh, subtle or subtile of heart. Okay, uh, shrewd in in a way. In other words, you know, uh, speaking about being being a subtle of heart, be, meaning uh, knowing the the ins and outs and the tactics to capture some capture your prey. So verse eleven says she is loud and stubborn; her feet abide not in her house. And that's why you see now in which by, uh, when it speaks about the entire of a harlot, it's talking about Babylon. And it says she is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house, which, again, is Babylon the Great, which is America. OK, that's why uh, anything that happens in the world, you know, America will make no uh, no slackness to make their voice known. And that was really prominent when you had uh, Trump in office, which was a prime example of that. And it says her feet in which, you know, the, the ones that are set up in the office, you know, we already know that uh, that those seats are, have already been uh, pre-planned to who's going to who's going to sit down in those seats. Because you have you have to understand that the ones that are really 
in rulership and that are ruling over the planet Earth are the bankers. The ones that that are uh, that you least hear about. So reading on uh, verse uh, 12, it says, now is she without now in the streets and lieth and wait at every corner. Right. Because everywhere you go and and that's why you got Jake that's talking about, oh, well, we should leave here and uh, go to, you know, uh, somewhere in another continent, you know, just to get out of this place, just to be a, a what they call expat. But guess what? In, in, anywhere you go, everywhere you go is at this is it has been poisoned by Babylon. They have drunken of that wine to where all the nations have have been made drunken. So no matter where you go, you're gonna find you're gonna uh, find the same same thing. That's why it says and lie and wait at every corner. So no matter where you go, you can go to to one corner of the world to the other she's gonna be there why because that nation that is that set up has drunken of that wine and that's why scripture scripture has is, is true when it says that all the nations have drunken of that same wine so verse 13 says so she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him i have peace offerings with me this day have i paid my vows Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Okay, and um, kind of read through this a little, or really a little quick. Um, verse sixteen, and it's the point. It says, "I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works with fine linen of Egypt." So why is Egypt mentioned here? Okay, and. You know, those in the know, you know, you already know when he speaks about Egypt, because guess what? Egypt, uh, when it speaks, uh, spoken of in Revelations, where it speaks about this, uh, the city, I believe it's a, uh, chapter 11. It says uh, the city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. So this this land, Babylon and Great, is indeed Egypt all over again. And that's why it's written here. Speaking about that woman. It says as though she decked her bed with coverings of tapestry, with car works, with fine linen of Egypt. Okay, which represents our captivity. Okay. Because uh that word Egypt goes back to the definition being uh bondage, all right, to be bound, captured. And that's why it's also equated to to this place here, which is Babylon the Great. Which again, going back to Revelation the eleven chapters, that that spirit, the city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, and um, actually, um, let me uh, see if I can go ahead and get that. Okay, it's locking. Here it is. So uh, this is Revelation chapter 11. And uh, this is at verse 8. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street. Now, that's not talking about physically being dead. Okay. That's talking about being in the dead mindset. Because uh, remember, we spoke about it, about uh, those who are void of understanding. Because understanding brings life. You know, understanding and life in itself are synonymous with each other. So if you're void of understanding, guess what? There is no way that you're able to support life or have the knowledge to support life. Because this is this is what this is. This is why the Lord gave us this word so that we can govern the planet Earth this way. And if we didn't and and um, sin and into the world, OK, which sin is what? Transgression of the law. So that being in, in into the world, now things are dying. OK. And which is now have uh, reached the point to where now our people are in the dead state to where, you know, they're just better off, you know, just expiring, you know, un unaliving. OK, and it's going to happen. And it's going to happen one way or another because the Lord is going to bring down judgments on the planet Earth. But let me keep reading. It says in their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city with spirits is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified okay why does it say that because the, the the image of our lord is being downtrodden how is it being downtrodden it's being downtrodden 
by another image that's been set up here in Babylon the Great, which is the image of Caesar Borgia, okay, or, or Cesare Borgia. That's the image that, that is being promoted here in Babylon the Great. And that's the image that almost everyone, and I say almost because, again, you have that small remnant that's returned out of that state. Almost everyone has bowed down to that image in one way, shape, or fashion. Meanwhile, the truth is now being brought out and the real image of our Lord is being presented. And guess who are the first ones to be in opposition against that? Our people. Or should I say the majority of our people, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's why the scriptures say we're also our Lord was crucified, because that's happening right now. Let me go back. Um, yeah, I believe that's it on this. Let me go ahead and move on to this here. This is the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 30. And uh, this is that verse. Let's see, slide here. It's like, yeah, I'm starting verse 1. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, say of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, El Shai. They take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. See that? So this is talking about the rebellious children that take counsel, but not of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, El Shai. They will much rather listen to someone who you know, maybe uh, into our uh, Buddhism, you know, and they'll look at that as something in high regards. Or they may look at uh, something else. A uh, case in point, that's why you got this community called the Black Conscious Community, which we affectionately call the Black Unconsciousness uh, Community. Because it's not, that that's definitely not uh, uh, bringing life back to the planet Earth. It says, um, but but again, they take they rather take those counsels, but not take the counsel of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, which is for our benefit, for our welfare. That's why the scriptures say, uh, I believe, is um, in the book of Psalms, it says that um, that this was meant to be for their welfare, but now it's become a trap. You know, roughly paraphrasing. All right, this that should have been for their welfare, and now they're getting trapped up by it, and, and by their own. The ones that, that struggle with, with uh, the scriptures. That's why the Apostle Paul say even his letters were difficult to, uh, to understand. All right. And they struggle with that as much do the other scriptures. And actually, you know, let me get that real quick. But it says rest. Here it is. So this book of Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 16. It says, it's also in all his epistles, speaking in them, of these things in which are some things hard to be understood okay which they that are unlearned and unstable okay unlearned and unstable rest okay wrestle as do also the other scriptures unto what their own destruction and see now what they have read in these things which are we reading out of they're wrestling with them they have because they're unlearned and unstable and as they do with the other scriptures unto, unto their own destruction. So they do this to destroy themselves. And that's a terrible fate. And, and I say that's a terrible fate because the Lord has put it in the minds of the majority of our people to do this. Which is leading them right into destruction. Okay. That's why we say call all Yahweh Ba Shemel Shai that the Lord didn't leave us in that state. Okay, so I'm going to read the rest of this, Isaiah chapter 30. Uh, I'm going to go to verse 2. It says, That that walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. So they didn't even ask the Lord, Is this the right thing to do? They did it anyway. Why? Because of that. What we read earlier, that, that lust, First John, uh, the second chapter, that because of the lust. And that, that's being perpetuated here by uh, Esau Edom. It's being perpetuated here in Babylon the Great to, to play on the flesh. And that's why the majority of our people have been overtaken by that woman, that harlot. 
So uh, verse 3, it says, Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. See that? It says for his, his uh, slack. Yeah, that's it on that. So the strength of Pharaoh, which is the, the current ruler of this planet Earth, is going to be your shame. And that trust, all right, that trust in the riches of Babylon the Great is going to be turned to their confusion. Because they trusted in confusion. That's why it's a place called Babylon the Great, which Babylon goes to the Hebrew word Babal, which means confusion. And it says the trust in the shadow of Egypt is going to be the, their confusion. So here it is. Now they're going to uh, be turned to a confused state. So that's it on that. Um, we'll go on to the next one. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30. And this is at verse 11. It says, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashanel Shai, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of uh, it's like it, will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. And so as the scriptures say, like it says here, it says, The Lord will make a full end of all nations except us. Okay, all nations whether he has scattered us but he won't make a full end of us that's why again he is has reserved that remnant the the elect of the nation of israel and it's but it says here it says but i will correct thee in measure season but we had to be corrected that's why through different generations you know we were we were slowly returning back to our power okay and now since this time being the last generation now the Lord has revealed all things, but he had to correct us in measure first. And it says here, and will not lead thee altogether unpunished. See that? So verse 12, it says, for thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashmiel Shai, thy bruise is incurable. Right? Isn't an incurable bruise, man? And, and, and the reason why is because the Lord, Yahweh Bashmiel Shai, has caused his bruise to fall on us. All right, why? Because we transgress the words of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai. And the only one that can heal that bruise is Yahweh Bashmiel Shai. That's the only way. That's why it says here that bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. Okay, see that? Uh, verse 13 it says, There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. Okay, so no matter where you go to to try to. Uh, to, to heal that wound, okay, that, that feeling, you know, that, that empty feeling that, that you have, that there's going to be nothing out there to, to quench that, you know, that that, that feeling of, of dread. And, and why is that? Because the Lord is the one who heals, all right? And, then, and, the, Lord, and the Lord does two things. He, he hurts and he heals, man, all right? He kills and he makes alive, like the scriptures say. He, he he brings darkness and he also and afterwards he brings light. Yeah, so that's uh yeah, verse 14 says, All thy lovers have forgotten thee, they seek thee not. For I have for, here it is, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. Why? Because and why was that regarded as the wound of an enemy? Because through the transgressions of the law says commandments, the, 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 the words of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai, we were made uh, at enmity at one point. And the Lord, you know, made us uh fall away. Okay, but now the Lord has shown mercy unto us, and now he is not looking at us as enemies anymore. Now he sees us as, as friends. Okay, even Yahweh Shai said that. Said that look, uh, I don't look at you as servants, but I look at you as friends. All right, and wherever uh I know, so to speak, you know, roughly paraphrasing, uh, also uh, his friend will know. Okay. But when you go into that word friend, it means brother. And you know, when it when you're dealing with brothers, you know, brothers share the most intimate thoughts with each other. You know, their plans, what, what they're going to do, 
you know, all every you know everything, and that's what's happening now. That that uh, the Lord is is healing us, and He's now uh, mending that relationship between us and the Most High through Him. That's why He is our big brother. <laughs> all right, you know, as uh, something we throw around, but I'm gonna keep reading. It says with the chastisement of a cruel one. For the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. See that? So, yeah, that's pretty much it on that. Uh, so it's like it. Okay. Yeah, so let me uh, grab these last few precepts, and then I'll close it out. So it's the book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 9. It says, Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such an one set his own soul to sail, because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. See that? So why is earth and ashes proud, man? Okay. And that's what's happening. Earth and ashes are proud. We're just made up of elements. You know, we've, we've been made out of the dust of the ground. So what, what is there to be proud about? You know, us here that I mean, you can't even explain why your heart is still beating. You know, you can't understand, you know, how, who taught you how to breathe is, 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 is uh, automatic and nobody taught you how to breathe. You, you already started doing that. So what was there to be proud about? So reading on said, there is no more thing, a wicked thing than a covetous man for such and one set his own soul to sell because while he lived, it, he cast, he casted away his bowels. So also is one, uh, so he set his own soul to sell. And that's what you're seeing in the, in today's time. Jake is selling themselves out for pennies on the dime. And um, and you see that. That's why certain of our people are chosen to be the forerunners of certain messages. And they have set these uh these individuals out to uh further put our people to sleep. And that's why um the scriptures say that our leaders cause thee to err. So that's it on that. I'm going to grab this next one. Out of the book of Psalms, chapter 95, verse uh, 10. This is 40 years. Uh, it's like, you know, that's not the one. Um, uh, I thought I had it here, but... Um, Okay, yeah, I don't think I had it on here, but let me go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, book of Amos, chapter 6, verse 6. It says that drink wine in bowls. Actually, uh, let me skip around a little bit. Uh, Amos, chapter 6, and uh, verse 1, and I'm going to jump around. It says, Walt to them that are ease in Zion and trust in the mountains of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. Okay, now let's go ahead and skip down to the point. It says that drink wine in bowls, right? Those that are relaxed, you know. Those that are relaxed here in Babylon and great, that, that wants to stay here. That wants to uh, continue to be a part of the system and, and a part of this, this, this diabolic machine. That is moving and generating, all right, off the backs of you jakes. And, and, and guess what? The Lord Yahweh Shah made it up this way. And that's the, uh, again, that's why he's a terrible power. Because he has uh, uh, allowed us to fall into this pit that we can't get out of. But now the Lord now is extending his hand. Okay. Which by which is by way of Yahweh Shai. He's now he's extending his hand out to Israel again. And, and Israel, they're not reaching for it. They're not reaching for that hand that's been stretched out. Uh, verse six, it says, uh, again, it says that drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the chief ointments, but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. So they're not grieved for the affliction of, of, of our people because Joseph represents our people as well. All right. The Israelites, they're not grieved for that affliction that's fallen on us by the hands of Esau, Edom. They're not grieving. They're not on, uh, they're not, uh, 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 
they're not bringing the same message that we're bringing, which is uh, the atrocities being committed here in Babylon and great and uh, awaiting and desiring the return of our Lord, Yahweh Bashmi on Shai, to bring justice. But our people, the majority of our people are not calling out for justice. No, they're fine here in Babylon and great. They're, as long as they get their 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 uh their daily uh, their their pay, or whatever, you know, they're fine. And you saw that too with um the, the stimulus uh packages that 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 they uh, implemented. You know, after them after the money came, you know, it was it was silence. Okay. But uh, that's that's you know the Lord uh, put them in that condition. So uh, again, it says that drink wine in bowls, just having a good time, and anoint themselves with the cheap ointments, but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Here it is, we're in captivity, and um, oh yeah, and those cheap ointments, all right, uh, cologne. <laughs> I know I may have lost some people, but yeah, man. But you have uh, you know jakes that you know get into uh which is nothing wrong with that you know uh you know putting on cologne or what have you but the jakes that that take it too far the ones that um you know get the latest you know per, uh, uh i almost said perfume get the the latest uh cologne the latest perfume the latest oils you know which again like i said there's nothing wrong with uh you know getting the uh getting you know uh you know stuff like that it was you know nothing uh too you know luxurious or nothing just just something to keep up with yourself but you know you got guys that promote that 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 lifestyle that this is what you got to do to get some sort of recognition okay and that's what you're seeing it said the ones that anoint themselves with the cheap ointments that, that's the individuals that i'm talking about and you have that among israel i, I believe uh kevin samuels did that for him for a moment we had uh, those different uh, colognes he was sporting. You know, he was, um, you know, and he had um, his channel was a, uh, that was a, a proponent or a, a major part of his channel at one point. And then he switched it over to uh, doing, it, um, I won't say interviews, but he was doing, you know, um, he was live, you know, talking. Okay. But again, but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph again. Okay. Uh, verse, uh, Seven it said, therefore, now shall they go captive with the first that go captive, and the banquet of them that stretch themselves shall be removed. Okay, so, um, let's see, yeah, okay, so I'm making this is the last one. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter five. Uh, and this is that verse, um, yeah, let me get straight to the point. Verse three it says, uh, O Lord, you how about Shemashar are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them. But they have not grieved. So the Lord has stricken our people, but they have not grieved. They haven't grieved. They're not grieving for that that affliction, that that wound, that bruise. Okay, because the Lord is the one that's stricken us, but they're not they're not grieving, and they're not even acknowledging that that they have been put in that in that uh, condition by the power, you know, by the Most High. Okay, so again, it says thou hast stricken them, but they are not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. See that the Lord has consumed, completely consumed our people by way of of, of the uh, the curses spoken of in Deuteronomy twenty eight chapter. But guess what? They they still have refused to receive correction. They they they're not making efforts to. Uh, Correct themselves in the ways of our Lord, but they would much rather go and do their own thing and be their own gods, you know, to, to be their own. You know, I can do this myself. That's the mentality of Jake today, man. And the Lord's not dealing with that. And reading on says, They have made their faces harder than a rock, they have refused to return. All right. So it so said they have made their faces harder than than, than a rock, and you know, in, in other words, they're being hard headed, okay, and, and they refuse to return. That's why the Lord has considered our people being stiff neck, okay, because a stiff neck, and and I always think I go back to the image of uh, that goat, 
with a you know a strap around his neck. You know, he was tightening his neck when the, his uh, his master or his uh, owner was trying to pull him over to one side, and he's stiffing his neck, and you know the guy's pulling on him, that, and that's how Jake is, man. All right. Because why wow, again? Because they refuse to return. All right. So uh, with that, I'm going to close it down um, on that note. And uh, once again, you know, Lord's will. This is indeed edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, this word fed you to the full, and that um, he was fully uh, fed with uh, this truth. And um, and I'm going to close it out with that. So once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rokhakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Ruel to this day. Also, Shalom, one, peace and safety. And salutations to the hopeful elect, continuing to labor in his work and labor to show for your diligence and make your calling and election sure in faith, in truth and sincerity, and also in all charity. And with that, we'll say Shalom.